So I know a lot of you who watch the channel regularly and have seen my DIY videos are like WTF man. This kid changes his mind every other day. He builds one boat, then he moves to the next, and then he doesn't finish the boat. Well, you're right. But I promise you, it's for a good reason. So there's an, a run coming up at the end of February for Keys Island Runners. It's a memorial run for the, Hel the owner of Hellcat, Ray. And if you guys don't know, unfortunately he passed away in a bad boating accident a few months ago. And Keys Island Runners is, is organizing a run for a memorial run for, for him. So I want to take this boat and I want to get it ready and in the water by the end of January. I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes work on it to get it ready. A lot of a lot of little tedious fiberglass work that some of you guys care for, but it's just boring. I just want to get it done. One of the things is closing off the gauges that I'm putting in GPS. I had a big hole here covering it up. This is high build primer. A lot of you guys are asking for the checkmate update and I still have it. It's right here. There's the checkmate. The reason that I stopped working on the checkmate is because I don't want the checkmate in the water until it's 100% brand new. Brand new engine, brand new rigging, brand new everything. If you guys are OGs to the channel, you know that this is my pride and joy. This is the technically the love of my life. My first real boat, my first boat build. And I built this boat two years ago, three years ago now. And I, and I knew nothing about boats. This is a spray can paint job. It's lasted pretty a long time. Something fell on it and scratched it, but this is pretty much spray can. It's lasted a long time, other than a little bit of fading here. My plan is to completely redo the boat again. The first time I redid, I did this boat, I made it out of wood and I did it wrong. And well, here you go. I need to strip down all those ugly stringers that I have no idea what I did because I had no idea what I was doing and I'm going to redo everything out of Kusa board. The only thing I'm not redoing out of Kusa board is a transom because I know 100% that that transom is never rotting again and that's a lot of work for no reason. That's a super strong two and a half inch transom. So this boat is not going to be in the water so it has a brand new 300R. I'm gonna, if it doesn't have a 300R, it's not going in the water. It's just going to sit there till the day that I can get that 300R and that is what it is. You guys are also familiar with the 23 Donzi. It's a 1988 23 Donzi center console. Well, bad news is July 4th, I hydro locked the engine and I blew a really big hole in a 2005 Yamaha four stroke. It had a four stroke Yamaha. And when I was putting the boat on the trailer, this trailer is not for this boat. This trailer, is, this trailer is my buddy's boat, my buddy's trailer. And I don't want to adjust the bunks because it's not my trailer. And the way that this is set up, the stern of the boat was underwater. And I didn't realize it when I was jacking it up. I had my girlfriend on the boat helping me throttle the boat up because it was a super small ramp. And it was a ramp that I never launched from before. Long story short, the stern, the engine was underwater. I didn't realize it. She turned off the engine. When I went to flush the engine, I noticed that it was a little boggish. I did a bad mistake by putting it in neutral and just giving it a quick little rev to see if it was like a spark plug or if it was a misfire. Just trying to diagnose it. And the moment I did that, it went boom. Blew a huge hole on the side of the block. So... Needless to say, Yamaha is off the boat, it's no good. And the plan for this boat is to close off the transom, close off the transom and put it on a bracket. Originally, we got this boat for a really good deal because the previous owner thought that the transom was cracked. Thank God it's not cracked, it's not a bad transom. We ran the boat for probably a year before the engine blew or before I blew up the engine. And when I took the engine off, and doing some further inspection, what you see here is the top cap. See, this is the top cap right here. It's connected to this bottom, this is top. And it's just cracked along the caps. And this crack that you see here is just the top cap. It's not the actual transom itself. So that's amazing news. It saves me a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of money. 
So those of you asking for my dad's 38 Donzi ZRC is at the shop. He he blew up his transmission that was under warranty. Okay, he blew up the transmission that was under warranty in the last poker run. And it should be ready and he should be going for another seat trial today or tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'm going to be open to be able to film it, but definitely going to put out a video soon of my dad's Don's ZRC. That is Lindsay's Don's ZRC. He's out of state. He's in the military. If you guys, a lot of you don't know, he's in the military. He's out of state. So we're just keeping it safe for him. My little homemade skiff. The reason I put this in the bat burner, well, is because I'm one guy that doesn't make a lot of money. And I'm trying to get this boat in the water first. This boat was originally for my girlfriend, where she can learn how to do everything, and it still is, but we're gonna focus our attention to this boat. Enough talking, I gotta go get some parts and some materials, and I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. I need a lot of stuff. I need like five or two buckets. Okay. Of ten gallons. Mm -hmm. uh, two of the three quarter, two of the three quarter inch. The sheets. The sheets. Let's see how many I have. There. Um, I'm, I think I have one, but the, the delivery is literally gonna get here like any moment. It could be now. It could be in an hour. I'm in Palmetto Bay. Yeah, bro, have one. Oh, no, I have two. I have two. You have two? Yeah. Two of what? Two of three quarters. So, the damage at Okeechobee Marine was $450. All right, guys, we're back in the garage. I'm gonna start working. I'm gonna show you guys everything that I gotta do. Let me give you a quick little walk around of what I've done to this boat and what I plan on doing. You guys can see here, it's pretty much a bare hull. And there's a lot of things different in this boat that a lot of 21 Talons do not have. One of them being the sun deck or the little hatch. It's all the way back and it doesn't have anything for a sun deck. Usually on this boat, on this hull, that goes up to here and then this makes a huge lounge sunbathing area uh, with a cushion and I want to make that happen again another thing that I want to do is put the floor in because I don't want to see this void there but I'm afraid which I don't want to do is lift this any higher I don't want to sit when I'm sitting in the boat I don't want to sit any higher than I need to these are the seats that I had on my checkmate. Let me get in here. These are the seats that I had in the checkmate. And this boat is going to be getting all of the checkmate's old stuff. It's getting the fuel tank. Right now it looks ugly. I'm going to sand it down, repaint it, make it look pretty. But this is going to be the 32 gallon fuel tank. It's going to sit like this. I'm planning on making the floor just up to here. So the tank can still sit a little into here and I'm gonna build a frame for the tank on its side. All right? I gotta cut just these support beams here that the previous owner made when he bought out a Kusa board. And I'm gonna cut it probably four six inches back right here on both sides for the tank and rest a little bit more further back. And I'm gonna be building once this is done I'm gonna build a center console right here i know a lot of you guys are not gonna not, are not gonna like this idea but hear me out this boat is mainly going to be driven by my girlfriend it's going to be given to a girl that has never driven a boat and the reason that this boat is going to be driven by her is because this is her boat we bought this boat for my girlfriend so i'm technically building a boat for my girlfriend for a girl who's never driven a boat that homemade boat right there was supposed to be for my girlfriend. But since the run is just a month away, we don't want to go on a run in a little bathtub. We want to go on a run in a big boat. So we decided to just postpone that a little bit and she's gonna learn how to drive a boat in this 21 Talon. 
So my idea is to use this throttle and shifter down the middle. So when I'm riding passenger, I'll be able to throttle and have her drive. I'll be able to control the trim and the jack plate on my side, but I'm still gonna do everything on for the driver. So when I'm driving or whenever she gets more experience, she can control the boat all on her own. But I'm gonna make the console to have the trim and the jack plate and the throttle down the middle. In the future, we'll change that up and I'll put a hot foot, but for now, it's gonna be on a hand throttle. And it's, there's gonna be a console that connects from the dash all the way down the middle. So I'm gonna be building that. That's the beauty of building your own boat. You can do it how you want. So let me show you my materials that I bought today. I have this three quarter inch foam board that needs to be glassed on both sides a few times. This cost me $100 a sheet foam. This is what I used to build that center console and that is super strong. Here is 10 gallons of resin. Each barrel costs $80. And that's why I love going to the shop. I've been using this resin forever and I never had any issues. In the beginning, people used to tell me, oh, don't use this resin. This resin, the store buys the barrel and then they individually package them. So that's why you see that it says bakery essential frozen eggs. It's not frozen eggs. This is fiberglass resin. They just buy the, they buy the big barrel. They separate them and they make some money. So I got that. <sighs> Everybody knows I love my super polyfill. I use this stuff. I'm gonna be using this stuff to build the console This is what I'm gonna use in the beginning to glue the foam because first I'm gonna cut the foam out and glue it with this and then I'm gonna shape it and fiberglass it it's so much easier. You're gonna see in the video so this is what I use for that and also to 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 raise up and flare out everything that I need to flare out I use this you definitely need a hardener for this stuff, just the same hardener you need for the resin. And then this lightweight 3M body filler is what I use for all the little pinholes. So for example, you see these little pinholes right here? This stuff, stuff like this. Oh, I knew I forgot something, always forget something. I forgot the guide coat, the ink, man. I'm gonna have to go to the store tomorrow and buy some guide coat. <laughs> I always forget something. It is what it is. But that 3M body filler is what I use for this. Normally I would get ink and ink all of this up, make it either blue or red. And I will probably make it red or whatever, blue or red. And then you sand it down. Whatever stays blue or red, you gotta fill it in with 3M body filler. You sand it down and it's gone. I love this stuff right here because it sands down super low and it covers up any pinhole. Highly, highly, highly recommend this stuff right here. If you're doing any fiberglass the detailed repairs. If you don't care too much, just use this, sand it down, you'll be fine. Um, use a 220 grit primer, paint it, let it, let it be. But if you wanna do a detailed job, you definitely use this. I got some black um, exterior gel coat but this is what I'm gonna be using for the interior, for the floor, only for the floor of the interior, I'm gonna be using this. And just your basic acetone, leftover resin, shop strand. And this is the high build primer that I've been, that I use. I only use the high build primer on the areas that I fiberglassed. You don't gotta use it on the, on your paint stuff or things that smooth, you don't gotta use it only on the stuff that you're fiberglassing. This boat had some big ugly holes right here, cover that up. Make it look smooth. So if you guys have any questions, comment down below. And I'm gonna get to work. Very important, safety stuff. Before I used to only use my mask, and now I use my mask, my goggles, and my ear protections. I've been suffering a lot from ear infections, and I think it's because I don't use any ear protections when I'm sanding. So now I definitely use my ear protection, my goggles, and my mask. You might want to get yourself a nice fancy suit. I'm already used to the itchy nights. It's normal for me. But you definitely want to get yourself a nice suit if you're going to be doing a lot of sanding work. Today's plan is to do the floor, do the back, and do all the fiberglass stuff. Let's get to work.